The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 119. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Mikkel Zvane, author of Startup Land, how three guys risked everything to turn an idea into a global business. I think you guys are going to love this interview, and I know you'll want the book afterwards. So um, obviously, you have the opportunity to purchase it, but you also have the opportunity to win this book if you become a VIP at the EL, uh, the www.theelpodcast.com. Now let's jump right into the interview. Welcome, Mikkel, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thank you so much for having me. Will you take just a moment before we take a deep dive into the book and tell us just a little bit about you personally? Yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Mikkel Svane, and that's a Danish name. I'm originally from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, um, and uh, moved to San Francisco five years ago. Um, we bootstrapped my company, Sendesk, out of Copenhagen for two years before moving here. And, and, and it's been a fantastic journey uh, building and growing this company together with my uh, two co-founders. I'm also married. I have a bunch of kids, and we are happily situated here in San Francisco. <laughs> Excellent. Mikkel, I actually went to a, a Danish school here in the States. Uh, it, it went out of business, so it's no longer around, but it was Dana College up in uh, up in Blair, Nebraska. And we used right. to have uh, ex- exchange students that would come. Uh, I don't know if it was Danish business students that would come uh, for a month or two to our school. So I, we got to we got to mix and mingle with them. Danish business students came to Nebraska. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, and so we felt bad because they were they were they were creating their vision of what Americans were all about <laughs> based on you know Nebraska, very corn fed, uh, uh, husky. You know, it's the corn huskers. You know, the football team, um, men and women. So, so we were like, well, it's not exactly. You know, San Francisco is probably a complete uh, one eighty from uh, from you know Blair, Nebraska. But anyway. Uh, so first of all, thank you for sharing that about yourself. And now let's jump right into your book, Startup Land, which was just made available a couple of days ago, really, December 8th, 2014. And Mikkel, we're going to move quickly, but here are some of the top questions that our listener slash reader would love to get answered. So the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Startup Land? Uh, I, I get this question a lot. I, I always have a hard time answering that. But I think, I, I, so in, in my role, I meet a bunch of entrepreneurs. And I think that, you know, I think it's it's always been hard for me to kind of give advice, but I always found that they found some kind of inspiration in how we did things. And, and so I think just that plain sharing uh, the story, I thought that could be a good idea. I think that that's a that's a in many ways a, a very typical, a very kind of arch typical story about somebody is trying to build a startup and then moving it to America. And, and what does that actually mean? So um, I, I, I had an impression that there was readership for such a book. Um, and I think also the, the second part is that we are a big company today. We have something like 800 employees and we're growing very, very rapidly. We grow like 70, 80 percent year over year. Um, and we get more and more stakeholders in this company, like employees, customers, partners, um, investors, a lot of different people. And I think that having something that tells the original founding story of the company is something that, you know, gives everybody a little bit of insight and, and confidence in, you know, what, are, what is this and this company. So you started to dive into the second question already just a little bit, but that's really what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. One of the things I struggled with when I, when, when we started writing this book was that I wasn't sure if I should have kind of a, a point with the book, you know, like this was, this was the, this was what I tried to say with the book. I, I was kind of searching for like, is there a meaning with the book? And I think I felt, um, I felt good when I kind of accepted and realized that that not necessarily have to be a meaning with the book. That like a good story in itself can be good inspiration. So I think that you won't find a lot of like, this is me telling you exactly what to think about because this is how to do these things and it's not a guide to how to build a startup but it's something that can give you perspective and inspiration for your own journey 
how would you recommend the reader engage with your book? Is this one they can jump in and out of, uh, cherry picking information as they go? Or is this really one you designed to be read from front to back? It is. It's definitely designed to be read from it. It has a narrative and it, it tells it, it, it takes us from up, uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> mm. almost all the way to where we are today as a company. So it and, and it's, you know, it's not a long book and it's relative. You can read it, I think, in three, four hours. Excellent. So, Michael, we're to my favorite part of the entire interview, and that's where I want to hand over the mic and really give you the opportunity to, to let this reader, you know, slash listener really know what your book's all about. Because again, they're looking for that next book that's going to help them move forward personally or professionally. So will you will you help us understand what your book's all about? Yeah, of course. So, um, well, the book starts out by giving a little bit of my background, um, how I've had a startup before, and even how I started working with software when I was a kid. Um, I had a company in the dot-com days that, that unfortunately didn't turn out that well, but it was a very, it's a very interesting company, a very fun company, uh, and it was during those days, the dot com days, that I met my two, uh, what were going to be my two co-founders for Sendesk. Um, so we got together after uh, some years again, and then decided on building uh, Sendesk. And and two of us had some experience from the customer service software industry for a few years. Um, and was underwhelmed by the by that industry in general, by the lack of innovation and by how companies thought about com- uh, customer service. So we got the third founder involved, and uh, and uh, we tell the early days of us trying to build this product and bootstrapping it, and and all the difficulties there are with bootstrapping a company and and keeping three founders together. And I think that's probably one of the the parts of the book that I feel the most for in that it is a very, very sensitive time. And it's it's where most companies, they fail or most startups, they fail. It, because like keeping a couple of very talented people together and just focus on one thing where where you have to deal with all the uncertainty of actually knowing whether what you're doing is does make it makes any sense for anybody. And, and just believing so strong in it while at the same time be realistic about maybe you're doing the completely wrong thing. That's a very sensitive uh, part of uh, part of a company's life, and I, and I really like describing that part. I think that's something that's very close to my heart. We, we then go on describing how we tried to raise money, and, and that was a terrible thing to do in, in Denmark and in, in Europe in general. We didn't have a lot of success with that, and we were even very close to taking money for somebody that – where we just realized these were the complete wrong people to take money from. Um, but um, we ended up doing a, 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 a round of uh, family and friends uh, investing, as we say, or family, friends, and other fools. Um, <laughs> and and they, helped, they helped us uh, get over the initial bump. And right after that, we got a, a German angel investor, and, and suddenly we had momentum to, to, to start building or taking a little bit more seriously and pay ourselves a salary and so on. And, and that helped us get over the initial bump. Um, then we are in 2008 and the whole credit crunch happened and, and that changed the whole investment environment a lot. And, and I, we started pitching in the U S at that point and I traveled back a lot. Uh, I think I spent probably every, f- f- you know, probably 10 days a month I spent traveling, um, and, uh, trying to raise money. We talked to a lot of uh, US VCs and we're relatively close with a bunch of them, but like the whole credit crunch made that period very hard to raise money in. And, and I now also describe some of the heartbreaking experiences we, we had with that. Um, I also, I also talk about like how traveling back and forth is, is tough on you and it's, you, it makes you, it makes you grow older in a, in a non positive way. <laughs> um, and I, I personally had to deal with a lot of like flight, uh, fear of flying and it's just not, it's just not easy. And, and like I had two young baby girls in that period too. So it was a relatively stressful part of our life. Um, but we were very lucky that suddenly we met this investor out of Boston, uh, a guy called, uh, Dev Dirt from, uh, Charles River Ventures or CRV as they call themselves now. And he did our series A and he believed a lot in us and, and he really gave us a chance and helped us move to the U S and, 
fix our visa situation and all these different things. And, and right after that, everybody, all the VCs got very interested in us. And, and we moved to San Francisco, started hiring people here. And, and that, of course, is also a challenge, you know, because even though San Francisco is fantastic compared to any other entrepreneurial uh, community and environment in the world, you know, when you come here and you don't have a network and you don't know a lot of people, like starting to hire an organization is really, really hard. And it's you don't know where to start and there's so much competition. And we as like humble uh, Europeans had to deal with these very, you know, uh, in your face resumes of Americans that are you you guys are just very very good at writing your own resumes. And we didn't know <laughs> we we and we describe. I have this scene in the book where I describe. More than interviewing somebody and then afterwards coming into my office and saying like, okay, we need to give this guy my job because he's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like we go on to describing some of our initial of building out the company here. And, and I think uh, um, um, that's, just, that's just been a fantastic journey. And there's a lot of the things about the five years we've had in San Francisco that I basically don't describe because – Maybe I need a little bit more distance to these years to fully understand like the crazy growth we've been through here. But I, I end up describing where we are today and the recent IPO we just went through and try to be very honest and open about that whole decision about going public and what does that actually mean and what, what does it mean for the organization and for yourself personally and how much work is it and, and all these different things. Um, and uh, and uh, and and uh, and that's basically where we leave the book. With now we are building a new company. We're post IPO. This is the beginning of a very new journey, and it's going to be very very interesting too. So you just went through a ton of phenomenal content, and uh, and you did a great job of, of of giving a review of it. I know it's kind of tough to give a a review on the book, but this next question is going to help break it down even a step further. And basically, what we're asking is if the reader can only take away one concept principle or action item out of your entire book what would you want that to be ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think that i think there's a few things that matters when you build something is that first and foremost you like when you are in a situation where you have the opportunity to build a company like this you have to understand what a privileged situation you are in you know because so few people actually get the opportunity to do that and to scale it so enjoying it i think is a big part of it make sure that you really appreciate what you're doing and 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 try to enjoy it um and and then remember that it ultimately whether it's customers or partners or employees or Whoever your stakeholders are, investors for that matter, uh, they are all people. And like building real relationships with all these people are so critical for how you can grow yourself, but also how you can grow your company. Um, and, and that is something that has been important for our journey, but it's also something that has become important for how we build our company. Like we are a company that is all about the relationships and and we, we've seen how critical it is for a company that they build real relationships, even with their community around them. Like this is one of the things that we have taken very close to our heart that because we live in a rough part of San Francisco, that we can build real relationships with the people just out here in front of our door and be a part of that community is something that transforms your company and, and can make you do things you, you didn't think you could do. So I think there was several quote worthy things that you just said, and that actually leads into our next question, which is, do you have a favorite quote from your book? Oh, there's a lot of great quotes. And you know that I've been working with a professional writer on the book, uh, Carly Adler, and she's, she's very good at, at making me feel that I have some great quotes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like how, I think I like how the, the book ends, you know, that, that, and I think that's I talk for everybody who's been involved in in growing this company that we still feel that we're just in the very early days of the company and we're still feeling that we just entered a new part of our journey and, and we're not ready for any of it to be over yet. And 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 I'm much more excited about what is in front of us than what has what is behind us. Excellent. That was an excellent wrap up too. So it wouldn't be a book podcast, a book centric podcast, if I didn't ask you for a recommendation. And what we're looking for here is basically a single book recommendation, but one that really impacted your life and maybe even created a paradigm shift for you that helped you move forward. 
Oh, I've read so many uh, great books through my life. Um, I think, like, if you want to think about one that is maybe relevant for for our journey and for how I thought about Sendesk and also how I thought about my book is a uh, it's actually another San Francisco author called Poe Brunton. He wrote a book called The First 20 Million is Always the Hardest. I don't know if you heard about that one. I, I have I, not. And I have to say, I, I probably read that book when I was in my 20s, early 20s. So it's many years ago, <laughs> probably something like 20 years ago. But the cool thing about that book is that he describes how hard it is to keep kind of a team together around an idea. Um, and I think that's something that I took really, really on as I continue to build my own companies and startups, like really understanding, like, what does it really take to get people to to uh, get together around an, an idea uh, when you are so different and you have all these different motivations and ideas for, for doing what you're doing? So that's one of the things that I took away from that book. And also, I think it gave me an insight into Silicon Valley in San Francisco. That was fantastic for, for a young guy like me at that point. So thank you. We haven't had that recommended before. And so I love to get new books. I love to add new books to my list as well. And I know that the, the reader slash listener does as well. But Mikkel, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also on your book, Startup Land? Yeah. So so please follow me on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, my first name, last name in one word. So Mikkel Svane. And uh, also startupland.com is a great resource for everything about the book. Excellent. We'll put those resources in our show notes so that people that are out jogging, uh, driving, whatever they may be. I know uh, like 70% or plus of our audience is actually probably listening mobile right now. So we'll put that on the show notes at the elpodcast.com so people can access uh, all of that there. So Mikkel, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your book with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening in today. I loved that interview with, uh, with Mikkel. And if you want more information on him or his book, Startup Land, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Thanks again. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.